welcome to our world news program. Today, we're diving into how China is leading the charge into an electrifying future, with the International Energy Agency predicting a significant surge in global electricity demand, largely fueled by China's booming electric vehicle market and data centers. With clean energy on the rise, China is positioning itself as a key player in the global energy landscape, aiming for over half of its electricity to come from low-emission sources by 2030. In other news, Indonesia is putting the brakes on the sales of Apple's iPhone 16 due to the tech giant's failure to meet local investment requirements. This move has left many consumers frustrated as they consider purchasing the device from abroad instead. Apple is now under pressure to comply with the regulations and renew its domestic component certification to get back into the market. Lastly, we take a look at Beijing's recent military drills near Taiwan, which showcased enhanced coordination between the PLA and the Coast Guard. With a significant show of force, these exercises highlight China's wartime posture and its strategic ambitions in the region. As tensions escalate, analysts are closely watching how this military readiness might affect foreign interventions and maritime access to Taiwan. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. Nikkei Asia reports that the International Energy Agency, IEA, has declared that the world is entering an age of electricity, with China at the forefront of this transformation. The IEA's annual World Energy Outlook indicates that global electricity demand is set to surge, potentially doubling by 2050, largely driven by China's rapid growth in electric vehicle usage, cooling needs, and data center expansion. As China accounts for two-thirds of this growth, the report emphasizes the significance of its transition to clean energy. It suggests that low-emission energy sources will need to provide over half of global electricity by 2030, while fossil fuel demand is expected to peak around the same time. The report highlights that Asia, particularly China, is now the focal point for global energy trade, with the region's demand for oil and gas outpacing that of Europe. South China Morning Post reveals that Indonesia has halted the sale of Apple's iPhone 16 due to the company's failure to meet local investment targets. The Indonesian government has mandated that Apple must fulfill its investment commitments and renew its domestic content license before the new device can be sold. Apple has only invested a fraction of the required amount, leading to frustration among eager consumers. CEO Tim Cook had previously hinted at the possibility of establishing a manufacturing facility in Indonesia, but the current situation leaves many consumers considering purchasing the phone abroad to avoid delays. This move reflects Indonesia's push to strengthen its local tech industry and ensure fairness for investors committed to the region. South China Morning Post also reports on China's recent military drills around Taiwan, which demonstrated enhanced coordination between the People's Liberation Army, PLA, and the Coast Guard. The exercises, dubbed Joint Sword 2024B, featured a record number of PLA aircraft and a significant increase in the involvement of Coast Guard vessels, indicating a strategic shift in Beijing's approach to potential conflicts with Taiwan. Observers noted that the drills showcased the PLA's ability to execute a blockade strategy effectively, with Coast Guard ships playing a crucial role in controlling access to Taiwanese ports. The involvement of the Liaoning aircraft carrier further underscored China's military readiness in the region, reflecting its determination to assert control over Taiwan amid rising tensions and provocative actions from Taiwanese leadership. Japan Times reports that Saudi Aramco has decided to cancel its ambitious plans for a refinery and chemicals project in Saudi Arabia, specifically a facility capable of processing 400,000 barrels of oil per day. This decision reflects a strategic shift towards prioritizing investments in Asia, particularly in China, where Aramco is pursuing lucrative deals that promise sustained demand for its crude oil. The cancellation of the Ras Al Care project, along with the shelving of a proposal to relocate it to Jubail, signifies a recalibration of Aramco's spending strategy as it aims to enhance its presence in the Asian market. Nikkei Asia highlights the United Kingdom's renewed commitment to attracting international investment as articulated by Chancellor Rachel Reeves during the International Investment Summit 2024. The summit aims to showcase the UK's strengths, including its prestigious universities and dynamic industries, to global investors, particularly from Japan. The UK government is focused on dismantling barriers to investment and fostering a pro-growth environment, with a new national wealth fund established to support future industries. Reeves emphasizes the importance of collaboration with Japan, which stands as the UK's fifth-largest investor, as they work together towards shared goals in decarbonization and technological advancements. South China Morning Post discusses Qualcomm's cautious approach regarding a potential acquisition of Intel, noting that the company is likely to wait until after the US presidential election before making any definitive moves. 
Qualcomm seeks to understand the implications of a new administration on antitrust regulations and U.S.-China relations, both of which are critical to the success of such a deal. As Intel faces ongoing financial challenges, with analysts predicting significant losses, Qualcomm's timing could be advantageous. The article also mentions the importance of political support for Intel's future, especially as it plays a pivotal role in the U.S. government's chipmaking initiatives, which are framed as national security priorities. South China Morning Post highlights the troubling trend of young Hong Kongers feeling compelled to lie flat in order to qualify for public housing, with 30% of the youth reportedly making this choice. This situation raises concerns about a reverse meritocracy where hard work is undervalued, leading to a decline in ambition and self-worth among the younger generation. While the government is making strides with initiatives like light public housing and youth hostels, more innovative solutions are necessary. Concepts such as a subscription living model and a housing credit system could provide the flexibility and incentives needed to empower young people, enabling them to pursue their aspirations and contribute positively to society. Japan Times reports on a significant shift within the Chinese finance sector, as disillusioned professionals abandon their careers in banking and fund management. The tightening regulations and government scrutiny have created a bleak landscape for finance jobs prompting many to seek alternative paths in more stable fields like education or even entertainment. The exodus of talent highlights the challenges faced in a stagnant economy where opportunities for growth and advancement in finance have dwindled, leading individuals like Suyuha to pivot towards helping students pursue their studies abroad instead of navigating the uncertain waters of the finance industry. South China Morning Post also reviews Didi, a coming-of-age film that captures the essence of adolescence through the eyes of a Taiwanese-American boy, Wang Wang. The story, set in 2008, follows his struggles to fit in while dealing with the complexities of identity and burgeoning feelings for a girl. The film, marked by its relatable humor and poignant moments, showcases the challenges faced by youth in a digital age. Directed by Sean Wong, whose personal experiences inform the narrative, Dee Dee offers a fresh perspective on teenage life, complemented by a strong performance from Joan Chen as Wang Wang's mother, making it a charming and authentic addition to the genre of teen films. Deutsche Welle reports that German intelligence chiefs have issued a stark warning regarding the escalating threat posed by Russia, suggesting that the nation could be ready to launch a direct attack on NATO by the end of the decade. During a parliamentary oversight committee meeting in Berlin, leaders from Germany's intelligence agencies highlighted a significant rise in Russian-sponsored espionage and sabotage activities, describing these actions as both quantitative and qualitative. BFE chief Thomas Haldenwang pointed to a suspicious incident at a DHL logistics center in Leipzig as an example of Russian sabotage, while BND President Bruno Kahl emphasized that President Putin views Germany as an adversary due to its support for Ukraine. The intelligence chiefs called for greater powers and flexibility to combat these threats effectively, warning of vulnerabilities not only from Russia but also from China, Iran, and domestic extremism. This warning coincided with similar concerns raised by British intelligence and comes amid ongoing investigations into past Russian aggression, including the poisoning of former spy Sergei Skripal. The urgency of the situation has prompted calls for improved data exchange and operational capabilities within Germany's intelligence framework, as they prepare for a possible confrontation with Russia. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.